Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Farming Simulator 22. My name is Steve Woody and this is year two. We are now into the second year of our run through on No Man's Land with what was no mods in the first year. Uh, today however we're going to install a new mod before we do that. I just want to clean up this little bit here. Uh, if you can just notice on the construction area, if I go to landscaping and painting, just see there was a little bit here that I couldn't do because I didn't have the space to do that. Nice. And I think we're going to be able to just tidy up here as well. All right, nice. That feels good. Don't, however, there we go, perfect. That looks good. All done. So, this is all cleaned out now. We do need to consider a new storage facility, which we'll have to work on. I think I'm going to just also bring that up to there. Perfect. Now, this is all nice and clean. Uh, almost. Almost. A little bit on the back corner there that we missed out. We can grab that, though. That's fine. And take a second. It's a little bit hard, I find, to get into the corners here. Um, it kind of messes up a little bit, and I kind of find that it's sometimes easier to do it from the back, so to go too far out, and then to bring it back in with this. Perfect. Looking nice. Looking nice. Okay, so, a bit of rain today. Uh, we definitely need to sort this field out. This field's in a little bit of a mess. Got some medium, medium weeds here that we need to get rid of, so... And that's something we're going to have to deal with, is uh, that field. And we can pl we can plow that field. That's something that we can do. In fact, we can probably do that now and get it ready. Uh, we've got the plow. It's just here. So we're going to prep this and start to get it ready. We're going to plow it. We can actually put the lime down that we need to do as well. I don't know if I'm going to be able to turn around here. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We got this. Okay, so. We then need to build somewhere for all of our tools to live because everything's outside in the rain at the moment. We don't want that. But that's something else we've got to consider. Also, we want to not allow to create fields. So, I'm not sure at the moment. I can't recall whether this is on or not. But if I put this down... Yeah, that's fine. So it's not on allow create fields at the moment. So this means that I can plow this safely without worrying about anything else, like on the outside. So we're going to go ahead and plow this. It's going to get rid of all of those weeds. It will create some stones, but that's fine because we can deal with that. But we can go ahead and plow this field and get this field ready. And then this field is then going to be ready for uh, the next crop season that we're going to do. Once this is done, we can consider um, actually bringing some AI in to deal with this. Might not be a bad shout. Yeah, I think we're going to mess it up a little bit. That's okay. We can we can fix that later. Um, once this is done, I'm not actually. I'll be honest. I'm not that keen on this plow. I don't. I don't really like it. I know it was like the the top of the line plow and everything, but it's I'm I'm not enjoying it that much. To be honest with you, let's uh, let's lift this up, let's turn it round, and let's just get the AI to deal with that for us, so we don't have to. That's just going to be one less thing for us to worry about then. Uh, we can actually move this over, flip it to the other side. Kind of get ourselves sorted out here where we... As long as we've got the tractor in the field, then the AI will know what it's got to do. There you go. So now the AI can plow that for us. We haven't got to worry about it. But that's one job out the way. As always in the morning, we need to ensure that we sort our water out. And we're going to need to start loading up our flowers. 
The next thing that we want to do today is we want to make sure that we've got the sawmill, put some wood in there. And then we really want to get some money together so that we can buy this Arctic unit and then that's going to be a lot easier for us doing our deliveries. Okay, first of all, let's just drop some water off there. And now we can start to load this up. We'll just chuck these in here for now. We can fix some more that in a minute. Okay. Now, we know the flower business has been good to us, and it's definitely created us this income source that we've been able to use, but we need to look beyond this now. We need to get to a point where we can have money coming in outside of the flowers. And I think for that, we're going to look at, to start with, eggs. I think eggs are going to be a great source of income for us, and I think we're ready with our farm now to start looking at animals and we can look at that production chain. But the other thing that we want to do today, and we've talked about, is we want to add a mod. We want to do the uh, course play mod. And that hopefully is going to allow the AI to be a little bit more switched on, a little bit more intuitive. And that's going to help us with things like the um, grass, when we're cutting the grass, baling the grass. Because at the moment the AI can't really do that. The AI can't bale the grass. They're not very good at that kind of thing. So what we're going to do, We've got no money left so we have to go and sell these even though we don't really want to because it's not the best time of year to sell these flowers we we just need the money so we're not quite in that position right now where we can just sit back and relax let these stack up and then sell them later so we're gonna load this up oh come here you oh don't want to drop that yeah, so we're just going to load these up, take them up and sell them. And hopefully that's going to give us enough money. Right. Just drop off the water there. Whilst that's happening, we can unplug. Connect up to this. got the AI working on the field for us so that's nice right, let's strap those down as we move around so we don't lose any and we're into September now so the silage uh, will have to go soon we'll make loads of money off the silage and that's gonna buy us our new, our new truck and the remaining items that we need which to be fair there's not that much left that we need now. We're, I think pretty much sorted in terms of things that we need. We need a um, something to weed. Uh, we definitely need something to weed and we need something to seed. So we need a weeder and a seeder. And there's a tool that does that in one, which we could look at if we wanted to. It's only basic seeds. We might need something a little bit more established, but we'll Right, we're not getting up there then, apparently. There we go. Okay, actually stuck and can't move on here, which is weird. Okay. That'll do. We don't really have that many to worry about messing about. I'm just going to chuck these up anyway so they're on there. Ooh. Okay, do you know what? In that case, we just let it drop and we reposition it. Sometimes it's easier just to let things drop and then we don't have to worry. There we go. Perfect. We 
can always push things up. But to be honest, we haven't really got that many flowers, so we can just get them on. Nice. Again, this is why we chose flowers, if you remember. It was much easier to load these by hand. We haven't got to worry about a forklift because flowers just don't weigh much. So we're quite lucky with those. Let's do the last pack. That's 2,600 there. 26,000, sorry. Which means we should get another 60k from this lot, roughly. I don't know what they're selling for in the market at the moment because I know they're a bit a bit less than what they're normally worth. It should still be worth 2,000 each, I think. So if they are 2,000 each, that means 20,000 for... struggle with this one. Try and just get that in there, jam it in and we'll stick these ones on top. Nice. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be pretty at the moment. It just has to be in there. As long as all the pallets are the right way up, that's the main thing, because if they're not, they won't sell. Just wondering where else we can stick a pallet. Probably in here. Yeah, I mean, that kind of works. The only problem is we're not going to be able to shut the side of this. I'm pretty sure that won't work. And I'm also pretty sure... Yeah, do you know what? We'll leave that one there for now. That one's not going to go. Alright, let's strap it all in. We'll leave the side open. And uh, let's go and sell these. So that would have been, if we'd have got that one in there, that would have been the last 2,000 that we wanted to, to load, or last 1,000 we wanted to load up. That would have been almost 40, 40k. We know we're getting around 20k for every 10,000 flowers, meaning there there would have been around 80k. So I think we're going to have about 75,000 from this. I thought it was going to be 60, it's a little bit more than that. It's about 75,000 pounds, which isn't really enough for us to do anything at the moment. We're almost in a position to buy some more land we're not going to be in a position to buy our new truck but we can have a look in the shop and see if there is anything on deal so let's have a quick look as we're driving up here go and check out the shop oh there's quite a lot on deal at the moment there's actually a new tractor steiger wheeled afs connect series that's 524 hp that's a absolute beast of a tractor absolute beast but only 24 miles an hour so don't really want that um, seed crops, there's actually a cedar here, and this one, relatively uh, relatively cheap, given the uh, the price of it there. There's also a trailer, a decent, decent sized trailer, which we could look at. Uh, we are going to want trailers, so quite a lot available in the shop at the moment. Um, some stuff we can definitely check out. Let's just uh, keep heading up here, shall we, as we look. So let's have a look at this first. This is the... Um, the HR 4040, the HR 4040. So we're going to have a look at the Cedars. And the HR 4040 is this one here. 
So it's kind of a mid-range 50k is what it would cost. But at the moment it's on deal what would be 50k selling for 20. So it might be worth buying it as kind of a mid-tier cedar. Um, better than what we had to start with. Just until we're in a position to buy like the top of the line one. I think at the moment, though, if I'm honest, we don't really need one. Uh, I don't see a, a, a I don't see a need for a cedar. So it's trying to sell that one. These all have to be on here to sell, and we'll spin this around. to finish off those last few sales on here. Bit of an awkward turning circle for this, for the tractor. There we go, we'll do those last few sales there. Perfect. So up to 76,000 now. And definitely in a position where we can start to look at buying some stuff. So yeah, this cedar, Gives us the option um, to definitely do better than what we'd had before. If we look at what we had before in terms of cedars, we had this basic one, which was 600 litres. This one's going to be 1,800 litres. It's it's definitely better than it was. It's, it's not that much better, to be honest. Not that much better, but better than it was. We want to look at something like the high end there. And this actually holds fertiliser as well as seeds, so... Something that holds fertilizer as well as seeds, that could be nice. Then we could just use the other one purely for lime. But that is like 200k, so maybe not just yet. For now, we kind of want to look at where we are with our finances. So in profit in May, a loss in June, again because of the purchases. July a bit in profit, August a little bit in loss, September in profit so far. But again, we need to look at what we can do. So knowing that we haven't really got much of an income source at the moment. Definitely not from trees. We need to get, cut some trees down, we can do that today. The bales and everything we can sort out, they'll go. That'll be a huge, huge bit of profit there. Uh, that will help us to buy the last few of our things that we need. Like we'll get the truck and things like that there. So for now, I kind of feel like animals are the, the thing we should be focusing on, right? So let's, uh, let's leave that there for now. We've kind of got everything done there. Let's just make sure this field is finished. It looks like we've missed a little bit here. So let's, let's finish plowing. I mean, this did a great job. It's just a little bit that was missed, so we're going to spin this round. Drop this plow. We're just going to plow this field out. And what we want to make sure we don't do is plow more than once, because that's where you end up with a problem with stones. And this is a huge plow. So we definitely need to get rid of those stones, but we can do that in a bit. Now let's grab that bit there. There's a little bit there we missed, we'll grab that. We'll spin around. going to grab this little bit here. Nice, nice, nice. That bit's done. And I think I saw a little bit over in the corner there, so we'll just do that bit. We're going to look for a better plow. I don't, I don't really like this plow, to be honest with you. It's not, even though it's the most expensive, I don't, I don't really rate it. Definitely not enjoying using it. All 
right so that's that lamp loud now let's go and just tidy up the other thing you'll notice here is there was a little bit of a, a mess on the end here so if we if we just focus on just cleaning up that little bit there and this bit we can just clean up here perfect looking nice Look at that, perfect water field. Feel like we've kind of gone over a little bit here as well, so. One well, that bit was there, but we can get rid of that. And then, kind of want to make this nice now because a lot of the edge of this field here kind of feels like it was old grass. it's got that kind of withered dying kind of look to it we want to kind of make that nice and new and fresh so I'll just update this all around the edge here it's all nice and clean same thing on this side we don't really want to dig in too much to the land something I am trying to avoid there I want to be able to tidy this up like this, but not without. You kind of see where it is. If we do this, going to clean up that edge make it look a lot nicer oh a bit too far a bit too far we'll clean that up in a sec nice so let's grab that beautiful looking sharp nice field ready to go all ploughed up, just nowhere to stick the plough. Again, don't really like this plough either. I'm gonna get rid of that. Now it's ploughed, we can roll it. And we've got the roller here, so that's all good. We also got rid of those weeds by doing that, which is nice. I guess technically we should be able to do this in one go. We'll probably take two passes just to be absolutely sure. Very nice. Get this field rolled. And it is ready to go. It's sometimes best to go over the edge there so we don't miss anything. Spinning it round, make sure we get that corner, which Yep, perfect, we just grab it, but we missed that bit, so that's fine, we'll, we'll come back for that. We're not the best driver. It's still very easy with this bit of kit just to be able to finish off this farm in a few seconds. So this land now ready to go. I'm going to need to fertilise it, but we'll sort that out later. I might have missed a little bit that was there. I might have missed this corner. But I'm also thinking, as I spun this, I might have missed that bit over there. Yep, definitely got it that time. I 
possible a little bit there might have missed. I can't figure out what that is. It looks like weeds or crops or something there. Okay. Let's look at the condition of the field. Perfect. Ready to go. It's this bit here which we obviously missed when we ploughed. So now that's done, we can leave that there. The grass fields out the back there, almost ready. Hopefully next month they'll be good to go. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at this add-on. So we're going to save the game. I'm going to click Save Game. And then we're going to come out of the game. So if to do that, we're going to press Escape. Come to here and we're going to Quick Game. That's it, we've saved, so we're going to Quick Game. Come back to the main menu. Now from the main menu, we're going to click on downloadable content. Downloadable content brings us into the mod hub. Now I might have spoken about this before, but we're going to go through it again now. These are the categories. There are so many categories. If I click on this, these are all the different maps that are available. So many maps. Uh, if you want additional tractors, uh, small, medium, large, so many, so many different things available here that you can, uh, you can grab hold of if you want to. You need to look at what the price of it is, you need to look at, and this is all down to the mod. Is it good, is it bad? So, stuff to consider, stuff to look at. Um, something like this, if you were to look at like this, this one here. Animated things, main door, rear window, warning sign, steering base and two planes, passenger seat, armrest, etc, etc. So you can see kind of what's been done to it, the uh, edits and changes, and you can decide if this is something you want to add. There's also like official add-ons as well you can look at. And this is, you can tell because the author is Giants Software. So these are like mods that the they've made into the game. And you can add these things. Some of them are paid, some of them aren't. But you can, you can always see. So lots and lots of stuff here to consider if you want to upgrade and buy stuff. For example, in trucks, I might want a better type of truck. And not the man that's currently on offer. So if I wanted to find something a bit more updated, You can kind of look around for these. These are the uh, some of the mans that I remember. Straw bales, etc., etc. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of things to consider, to look at. Some funny things, some decent things, some really bad things. But ultimately, you get to choose. You get to see what you want, find the price of it, decide if that's something you want or not and then you can add the mod. Now, how we're going to add the mod? Very simple. Now, for this purpose, we're going to ignore all of the stuff that's available here, including cars and everything else. You can actually get a bike. <laughs> you can get a, for a lot of different things. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to the bottom and also farmhouses, factories, so windmill pack, lots of really cool stuff here that you can get. Again, a lot of this stuff we'll have a look at later, but not for now. Lots of different greenhouses, different factories, so if you wanted to get into something else, mineral feed production, some digital displays which look pretty cool. Also, something like this where it's firewood, where you can take your wood and you can get firewood as a result. So, lots and lots of different buildings and things that you can build and you can see the price, production cycle per hour, cost of production, etc. So you've got to try and find what works for you and it needs to be balanced and that's some of the challenges, right? Finding stuff that's balanced. Now, with that being said, we're not going to mess about with any of that just yet and also gameplay, stuff in here, but we're not going to mess about with any of that. There's different things here where you can do um, uh, different settings and things where you can, you can play about and change things in the game. Again, we're not going to mess about with this. Whilst there is lots and lots of stuff that you can do. Uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. This is um, just makes the game a little bit easier for you to do stuff. If you want to do that, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do for the purpose of right now is we're going to look at the possibility of improving the AI. 
And the way we're going to do that is by adding a plugin called Course Play. We're going to press space and we're going to type in Course, and this is going to load up Course Play. So let's have a quick read of this Course Play FS22. Course Play takes the AI worker to the next level. So harvest and plow smarter. Use headlands, work on irregularly shaped fields, not just rectangles. Work around islands in a field like power lines. Save auto-generated courses to use a forage wagon to collect what a mower or harvester cut before. Find and collect or wrap all boughs on a field. Work on vines. Let up to five helpers work on the same field in a group. Combines, uh, combines find a trailer to self-unload when full. Unload combines with trailer or auger wagon. Set up your own fields wherever you like. Works great with auto drive and lets course play do the field work and auto drive to refill a sower or unload a forage wagon. Customize and automatically create field work courses to your liking with a course editor. Work in bunker silo to push and compact. As you can see, lots and lots and lots of stuff going on here with lots of updates down to 7.2 now. So a very, very active mod that is being constantly updated. And you can uh, see and get the idea here of, of this. Now, this is quite a, a complex uh, mod that we're going to have to play with and work through. So we can install it. We just simply click on install. And once we've done that, that's installed. We can then go back into our game. So we go back into career mode. We choose our save game slot and we open it. But now we can choose our mods and we can add this mod to this game. So now going into year two on this game, we did our first year with no mods. Now we're gonna add this course play mod and we're gonna start. And that's gonna allow us to go back into the game. Now, I don't know how this works. I need to learn this and that's what we're gonna to do together. So if you're, there's a lot of videos out there that kind of run you through this of, hey, do this, do that. But not everyone takes you through like loading it for the first time. So we're back into our farm here. But now we have this mod enabled, so let's see what it what it does, what it looks like. Right, so right now, everything kind of looks the same. The whole farm, map, everything all looks the same. If I press escape on the left hand side now, there's this new settings uh, option here called global settings. So CP driver wages, course play driver wages as a percentage of normal workers wages, 100%. CP driver automatically repairs whilst driving. Uh, we can disable that if we want, so don't repair. Uh, they should get paid the same amount. Fuel threshold. A driver will be released if the fuel percentage is less than 5%. Driver will be released if the vehicle or an implement is broken. 100% is off. Okay. Stop harvester while it's raining. Activated. Okay, good little feature to have there. Expert mode. Enables disables expert mode with more features. Gameplay friendly HUD. Use the HUD which will be controlled with a gamepad. Or gamepad, sorry. Show courses on the minimap. Action event help. Show action event uh, help text. Etc, etc. So lots and lots of stuff that we can do here. Once we're happy with that, we can save the game. And that's going to save the settings. So now that we have this, we need to figure out how this works. We can draw a custom field now. I think that looks like a new option. So if we want to draw a custom field, draw a custom field with the right click, with right click. So oh wow, okay. Okay. I mean, I guess, I don't know how that works. Oh, no, we do not. Okay, so draw custom field, so. Cool, draw custom field lines with the right click. So there, to there, to there, to there, to there. Perfect. Save custom field. Do you want to re do you want to save this recorded course as custom field CP1? Yes. There we go. CP1. Okay. Now let's draw another custom field. So this will be custom field CP2. Ready? So from there to there. Down to there. Beautiful. And then I guess we can have this one, which will be. Okay. 
Build number three. Okay, so now we've got our, our courses. Hmm. Now we need to figure out how this works. I don't think there's any other settings in here that we can use. So that's something I'm going to need to have a, a quick look at. So let's go ahead and uh, get used to the initial settings of how this works. Uh, give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, so if we press escape, go down to our settings here. Course play should be on the guide. Here we go, general information. Course play allows you to generate field courses with additional features, for example, headlands, etc, etc. Also enables all the other stuff, blah, blah, blah. For more example, please visit this GitHub. Okay. What is the expert mode? When the expert mode is deactivated, you only have access to some settings. The other settings are hidden and set to default values, which works in most situations. That way, we try to help users to get easier in okay, easier intercourse play without being overwhelmed by all the settings. First of all, you need to select a vehicle in the AI menu for generating a fieldwork course or gaining access to a vehicle settings and a course manager. The current loaded course will be displayed on the map. Global settings are always visible. For generating a course and starting the course play jobs, you will need to create the job CP Fieldwork or CP Wrap Click Bowers, similar to the Giants Helper. To start off with your first CP job, you would have to select a vehicle and a possible valid implement which is supported for the job. Then, by clicking on Create Job, you can select CP Fieldwork for Fieldwork Toolset or CP Wrap Collect with a bow wrapper. Okay. With a CP job selected, you would need to place the field position on the field for generating the course or using a bow finder on it. The position also roughly controls the starting point of your course. If you want to use the Giant's Helper to drive to the field, then you also need to set the target position close to the starting point of the course. The lane offset setting is only used if you want to have multiple helpers work in the same field. For this, please check out the separate help menu page below. When a field uh, position is placed correctly on a field, you will see a field border drawn on a map. If you are creating a CP fieldwork job, you will gain access to the course generator settings. Now it's possible to start the driver directly from the menu. The giant's helper will drive to the target position from any from there, and the CP job automatically takes over. Alternatively, you can start the driver from the HUD if you are close to the field with the vehicle, or using an auto drive mod to deliver the CP job close to the field. Wow. Okay. So let's. Let's jump into our tractor, shall we? Let's see. So from here, if we press H... Oh, wow, now we've got all these additional settings here, look. These are additional settings now because we're on here. So, course manager. Okay, open course editor, create new folder. Load course. Okay, so... Create a new folder and call this um, Field Jobs. Alright, so this is Field Jobs. Let's open the course editor. Target location is not a course. Okay. Load course. There's nothing to load. Okay. Create job. Oh well, here we go. Create job. Silo work, go to. Okay, wow, silo work or go to. Well, we don't want to do anything there, so. That's the global settings, this is the vehicle settings. Okay. Let's. Oh, maybe because we're at the silo, that's why. Maybe we, what we should do for now. We'll probably figure out a better way to do this, but for now, let's drive over to the field that we want to use this on. So, we're going to do this up here, right? This is where we're going to start. So, this is ready to harvest. Look at that. The grass is ready to harvest. So, we can actually start this today, get all of this grass done. And that's amazing. So let's uh, let's do this. Let's jump in and press H. Create a job. Hmm. 
Hmm. We don't actually want to do anything with a silo. Oh, because that's, that's kind of focusing over there. Which we don't want to do. So pick a target location is kind of here. Create a job from here. We don't want to do silo work. Oh, maybe because we don't have anything attached, right? Maybe we need to go and get the items that we need attached first. Let's go grab our lawnmowers. I don't even know where I placed them. Oh, they're over there. That's fine. We're learning. This is all new. But now we're at a point in year two where we can start to automate things. And I feel like we can automate them better because the AI, the base AI, is it's okay. But it, it, it does struggle. And so using this, we can really start to customize how this AI works. And this, again, just shows you the power of some of these mods and what they can do to improve the gameplay. So let's head out. Now eventually we'll be able to get this to start from a location, like in a garage, pick the stuff up, go and do the field, drop the stuff off and put it back. But we're just starting out here, so as we get to learn this and understand it, yeah, maybe just uh, chill while we figure things out. Okay, cool. So let's try again. Right, pressing escape maybe here. Create a job. Field work. There we go. So now we're attached. We're on field work. CP field work. So we can do a job for field work or we can do a job for CP field work. So start at first waypoint. Okay. Kind of outlined the field as well. It's got all the extra bits there which don't quite work. So... Generate a course before starting the job. Number of vehicles on the same course. That one. Rows to skip. Okay. Work width. Okay, I don't know what that is, but... Generate field work course. Oh, wow. So now, starting the job, I guess. I mean, it's doing all the edges as well. We can probably fix that later, but still. That's doing a job, which is nice. So let's see how this works. We can, we can focus on setting this up properly later. Okay. Pick that tree up, but that's all right. All right, we're just going to watch it and see how he does. He doesn't actually need to stop there. He could just spin it around and carry on. All right, not quite sure what he's doing there.
Oh, he's doing... Ah, uh, okay, so we need to work on the whips, right? So that's one we can do. Like, he's, he's going back next to it when he doesn't need to. So we need to work on the, the width of this. Which... I'm just going to call it this for now. I guess we need to figure out how this works. So we want to create this job, right? Work with, okay. Rows per land six, when in the center mode is land, this many rows are in each block. Okay. again so we told him to skip two rows is he going to do that I don't think he knows what he's doing. That's fine. He's, he's trying to start from here, but that's fine. We can we can fix that. We kind of need to know. That's where we want him to start from, right? So let's press escape. Let's go to the bottom and let's look at this again. So. You'd have to select a vehicle and possible valid implement which will be sorted for the job. Then by clicking on create job you can select CP field work for field work tools. With a CP job selected you would need to place the field position on a field for generating the course or using, okay. The lane offset setting is only used if you want to have multiple helpers working on the same field. Okay. Every fieldwork course is generated by the course generator. This is a mighty tool which allows you to customize the generated course to your needs. If you are new to this, you should probably start by only changing the headland amount setting. After that, you can always change the other values and hit generate. Okay. First few values you see here are real basic stuff. Work width. Most tools get the exact work width um, detected and you won't have to take care about this. Adjusting it will have an impact on your overall course. Multiple tools. This setting is used when you want to use more than just one vehicle to work on your course. Number of headlands. The best way to keep your vehicle on the field while turning at the end of the row is to add headlands. The number of headlands multiplied by the work width should be at least the total length of your vehicle plus the attached tools. The number of the headlands multiplied by the work width should be at least the total length of your vehicle plus the attached tools. Okay. Field center, different modes, and how you. Okay. Okay.
Okay. The headland setting will only show up when you have set it to at least one. On where to start on corner settings, direction and overlap. Headlands are highly suggested to prevent tools leaving the field when turning. Okay. All right. Let's try again. So we're going to press escape. We're going to go up to here. Okay. We're going to click on this. No. Kind of felt like I did already draw that custom field there, but... Mm. Okay. That's vehicle settings for that vehicle. This is global settings. I don't know what that one does. Is that like create job? Open close course generator. Okay, so now I'm on the field, so now I can press that. Ah, okay. Start working on the headland on the center of the field. Headland corners. Smooth. Okay. I don't really know what that means. So wasn't it like 15 meters? We'll have to have a look at that. Generate field work course. Oh, that's better. Yeah, look, that looks a lot better. So it goes around. Like that. That looks better. Generate field work course. Start job. Let's see, I think we might have just set it at the beginning. So I think he should now be going over to the start. He should. That top right corner, and then he's going to come back and he's going to do his job. And that's fine. I'm learning this, so we'll figure it out together. A place to stop though. Maybe he's going to go right around the outside first and do a lap and then come round. So, alright. Now he starts. So, this is his start location. Why hasn't he got his gear out? Oh, because he's going to start from there. Alright. Okay, fair enough.
Fair enough, just gonna start from there. I think that's because where I said start from. So I can change that, that's fine. Now, oh yeah, that, that's a much, much better turn. Much better turn. And he's gonna go and do the outside first, which is what he said, yeah. That's much better. Doesn't quite get it all, but almost, almost. That's cool. Can work on that, but that's that's much cleaner. Okay, I can work with this. Just needs to bring it down a little bit more to the edge of that field. That's where the end's going to be there. So, yeah, just missing a little bit on that field. Not quite getting it all finished. So that's okay. That's okay. I think I can work on that with a better, better outline. Okay, so now you've finished that. Where are you going now? Oh, because you would be, yeah, so this would be continuing, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Because it would have stopped where it started. It w that would have been the full loop. Okay, so now you would have finished that first loop. Now you're wasting time because you've already done this. All right, but you've lifted up. Okay, don't know why you've lifted up. Once I figure out how this works, we're going to look back at this video and cringe and be like, oh my god, could you, remember, you remember how stupid I was when I started? But this is what people struggle with, right? This is why it's good to see videos like this, so you can see the problems. Now this is working. Now it's working properly. I think if I look at the width as well, because the width was important of this, right? The width of this mower is 12.3. It is 12.3. So that should have been set to 12.3. Which is something that I could set in here, I believe. I don't know how to access the course I'm working on, so that's a little bit weird. Shows you where it's working, shows you what it's going to do there as well. So back up, back up and done. So that's cool. I need to fix this and clean it up, but we can do that. It's going to miss a bit there. That's probably because I changed it to 15 and not to 12.3. So that's probably my fault because I told it to do 15. But okay, I see how that works. Still not sure how to get back into that editor though, but we'll figure that out. And then it should be doing one more run. Now I kind of feel like it could turn here. I don't think it needs to waste time here by doing this, but it is. I think it can just turn and carry on. Maybe we can figure that out in the, uh, the expert mode. Yeah, I think because I messed up the width, that makes a lot of sense as to why this is leaving those little gaps. Continues at the edge of the field. Doesn't need to do that because it's done a circle on the inside. But yeah, look, if you look at them two gaps there, that, that makes sense from the 15 meters to 12.3. Okay, this feels good. This feels like it works. It feels like you can set an actual and plot an actual path. So this mod feels like it's a little bit intense to get used to. But once you've played with it, it feels good. Is this going to finish? Should go all the way to the end. Yes, it is. Perfect. 
That's done. Job done. Look at that. And it folds it all the way. And we're done. So now I just need to teach it to put the equipment away. And it's finished its job. Perfect. So now I can what? Press this. And I've got this job. So if I want to create this job of CP field work. So I pick a target location, which would be there. Build position. So that should be 12.3. Number of headlands. I don't know, we'll do two. Start working on the headland or center of the field. Headland corners. Ah, oh, so when I do that, then it ah, then it builds the course. Okay, that makes sense. So, target position should probably be here. Field position should probably be here. First waypoint. So then we open up the editor and then we generate the course. Perfect. So that's the course. So we start from here. We go around like that. Then we come back. And we stop down there. So we're going to go around, outside, around. We're going to come in, back around. It's a little bit messy, but. Okay, but that starts there. So field position should maybe be here like this. Yeah, because now we start here, look. Target is not on a field. Don't know how many headlands we need, but start work on headland. Start work on the headland or center of the field. Hmm. Okay, so we need to look into this. I don't understand how this works. But then once I've done that, generate the field, all right? And then, how do I save it? Save course. Clear current course, save current course. Top field grass cut, okay. Target location is not a folder. Okay. So now how do I 
delete this one. Oh, there we go. Delete entry. Yes. Sure. Rename entry. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. So then change mode to course edit file or course interaction. Okay. So I can come into here. Kind of want to draw that custom field, right? That's CP1. Edit custom field. Okay, so if I click on that, delete custom field. Let's do that. Draw custom field. I don't feel like I can zoom in far enough. I like I need to remove everything so I can really kind of get a feel for this. Rename custom field. I'm just going to call this top field. Grass. One point three three hectares. Top field grass done. Okay. So now this. That's all fine. Let's turn on active mode. Okay. Oh wow. Speeds. Um, okay, yep. Okay. Lots more settings now. I don't get what edit custom field means. It doesn't let me do anything, so that's weird. Create job. That is not the field position though. Why ask me to create a custom field if you're not going to use it, right? Like you literally asked me to create a field. So I've created a field. That one works. That one's all... Sort of the edges and stuff. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Target position. I think top right was fine. Placing that way. Overlap headland. Field center up and down, up down row direction. Yeah, wow, loads more. Headland corners, we can do sharp, I guess. Yep, 
Yeah, round it doesn't work as well. Smooth looks nice, but sharp. Yeah, we can do smooth. That looks a lot better. Okay, so looking at the headlands. Ah. Makes so much sense now. I just need one, right? So it goes around the outside, comes in, goes, but that starts there, that's weird. I don't know how many headlands, I need to look into that. Okay. So then it's kind of like fill position. I can put that there, put the target position there. So I can do that. Then I can open this up. There we go, that works. That, that, that. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, I think that's going to work. So now I've got that job. Now I can come along here and save the course. So let me just change the mode and we're going to delete that entry. Yep. And now because we've got one that we're working on, we can save it. So we're going to save the course. Into field jobs and we're going to call it top field grass cut. Perfect. Nice. That makes sense. So now that's done. Now the grass cut's done. I don't think this one's ready to do just yet. Let me just check. Oh my god, it is ready. Uh, some of it is and some of it isn't. That's ready to harvest. This is still growing. Yeah, so that's not quite ready yet. Next month it will be. But what I can do while I'm here, you know, just because I'm here, I can do this. So this would be moving to the front, opening this up, lowering it down, pressing B, going to the back, lowering it down, pressing B. Oh yeah. Hold on, the front one's not on. Pretty sure the front one's not on. Oh, it is. They're both on. That was weird. Just all this extra field here, right? There's no point missing it. So, okay. I'm pretty confident now I can use this. I understand how the, the course play works now. It is, it is a bit confusing. There is a bit to it. But I... I'm pretty sure I understand it now. So you select your vehicle and your tools and put your vehicle with your tools in the field or where you want it to work. It will then give you options regarding that. So field work, etc, etc. Then you need to select the settings to make it work in that field. You need to map out the field, name the field, set out the course, and then, it, and then when you click generate, it generates the course. You can kind of see the outline and it shows you what it's going to do. So you can make sure it's right. Then you can save it at that point. Which kind of feels good that you're able to save it like that. Oh, a bit too far. And then, obviously, just let it do its job. So that kind of makes sense. I get that. You, you've got, rather than just pressing... Because before, a standard, you'd just like, yeah, go and do a job. And you'd leave it. And you'd press automate and it would do its job. Now we can create jobs and we can give it a bit more. There's a bit more uh, granular control now over how it works. So that makes sense. 
Spin this around here. I do love this. So clean. Yeah, so that makes sense. So I understand how that works. Now, I guess I want to do the same thing on the other field, right? I don't have to start it now, but I can definitely set up that job. And once matey's finished, on the top field, he can do the bottom field. So... To do that, we're going to press escape. And come up to here and we're going to create a job I think we can just do standard jobs as well right but this is going to be a coursework so we're going to go for target position is going to be here to there yeah field position is going to be here so this is the field start on the first waypoint now we open up so now we've selected so the first thing we've done is selected where do we want the target to start and which field so whereabouts in the field. So now we've selected the field. It's highlighted the field in white. Perfect. Starting at the first waypoint. Yes. And it's field work. Great. Now let's open and close the course generator. Tools, headwinds, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Once we're done, generate field work course. Boom. And we click this button. If we now go back, this, as you can see, has now, it's going to start here. It's going to go up, down, all the way around, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's going to do that. Done. So that's it. Done. Now, now I've got this job. This is the job. This is the job that's here. I can come to CP and I can save the course. I'm going to choose the folder to save it in and I'm going to give it a course name. So this is going to be main field grass cut because that's what it's called. Now I've got my two courses. Perfect. Nice. So if I come to here, clear the current course. Okay, now I can load a course. So look, no courses are loaded. So I click on here, top field, load course, come back. Boom, top, top course, come back here. I want to clear the current course. I want to load this course and activate it, come back, boom, this one. So there you go, two courses. Now for this one, I'm gonna click on this. I want to rename the custom field. And this one's going to be called main field grass. This is going to be called small field wheat. There we go, we've got our fields. I could just call it small if I wanted to. Or I could, or I could just call it CP1, CP2, CP3. That would also work. But there we go, you can rename them, you can do that, that's cool. Editing the custom field, I don't understand what that means. It's weird draw custom field okay so okay so that's done so that makes sense and now on the mint small map i can actually see what they're called as well which is pretty cool so that's nice so that's really cool i like that There's a little bit extra land there. I don't need to worry about doing that though. But cool. Okay, so that works. 
So now if I was to let's say drop this off here. And let's say I was to drop this off here. Cool. Let's say I was to move this to here. Now let's say I was going to do this job and say I want you to do this job. So clear current course. Yep. Load course. Activate. Done. I don't want to create the job. I just want you to do the job. Yeah, I just, I kind of just want you to go and do your job. No. No. So I would need to attach the gear for it to work. Okay. Oh, there we go. Start job. Target is not on a field. So go to the field then. So you need to be on the field to start it. So, okay. What if I was to drive him? And stick him on the field somewhere. Just in a random place. Because there's another there's another mod. Alright, now let me try this. Now press escape. Create a job. I want him to do CP field work, which is already here. It's set. Start job. Yeah, now he's gonna go and do the job. Perfect. Okay, nice. That works. Cool. So it's just it's just a folder system to load jobs. And it will just remember the last job that you set. So you just create a load of different jobs that you want it to do. That's cool. So I might, for example, press escape and I might say create job. And I want to create go to. I want this to go to here. Now, I can't save this as a CP job at the moment, which is interesting, because that's CP field work. So let's continue reading. And let's go back. So, course play allows you to generate field courses. Okay, so it's field courses with additional features, for example. Headlands. It also enables the use of balers and forage wagons that can be sent on the same course as a mower or harvester from before. Another big feature is clicked on wrapping the bows on the field. All right, let's do that. So look, we've just done this. This was our our first test here. So let's drop that off, and then let's drop that off. Now let's go and get our wrapper.
Now this isn't going to be right because I've changed the job, yeah? It's not the same job as it was before, but... So I need to go and repair this. Should probably go and do that first. So I totally appreciate it's not going to be perfect because it's not going to line up and it shouldn't because I've changed the job since I learned. But next time it will be fine. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to repair this. It's 1,700. Also, oh my god, this is knackered. 12 grand. Wow. Damn. Okay. Alright. So let's move it to where it needs to be, which is in that field, right? It needs to be in the field. As long as it's in the field, that's fine. Then we can press escape. Go up to here. And we can create a job. Now, we want to do a new job. So we're going to clear current course. So there's no job. We're going to create a job. Okay. CP field work. Or do we just load the top field car? Do we, do we load this course and just ask it to start the job? Let's see if it works, shall we? Now it's not going to follow the exact path and I appreciate that. Because if we look on here, it's going to start down here going to work around the edge and do the bits in the middle which is a different path to what it actually did and I respect that where's it going where's it going it should be going to there I'm trying to find a road what <laughs> Why? Okay. Let's get him to where he needs to be. I did put him on the field, but he obviously got a bit confused. So, alright. Let's put him on the field at the start point where he needs to be. Which we can see. Look, there's the start point, and that's the way he's going to go. So, we can put him there, and then we can start job. So, create job. There's your job. Start job. Is he going to work? No. He's doing exactly that same thing again. Is he looking for the mowing equipment, maybe? What's he doing? Hold on, wasn't there another option? Wasn't... If I say that and that. Wasn't there a way to do like bales or something like that? Hmm. Let's read. First, you need to select a vehicle in the AI menu for generating field work course or gaining access to the vehicle settings and course manager. Okay. The currently loaded course will be displayed on the map. The global settings are always visible. For generating a course and starting a course play job, you will need to create the job. Either CP field work or CP wrap collect bales, similar to the giant's helper. So why don't I have a CP wrap collect bales? job. To start off with your first CP job, you would have to select a vehicle and a possible flat valid implement which is supported for the job. 
Then by clicking on create job, you can select CP field work for field work tools or CP wrap click with, bow, with a bow wrapper or bow collector attached. Right, well, I've got that attached. So that is attached, right? It's attached and I'm in the field. So I'm in the field with it attached. So surely that means now, if I come up here, I should be able, if I go to the job, I should be able to clear the current course, come to here and I should be able to create a new job, but not field work. I should be able to create a new job. Target position is gonna be here. Field position is gonna be here. But I don't wanna do field work. So that's not what I'm doing. Generate a course before starting the job. Yeah, well, of course. I don't want to do field work. Hmm. not field work why does it not accept the wrapper that I'm maybe if I disconnect from it so what happens now when I try and do a job create a job just go to okay and if I connect this now nah. uh, maybe it's because it's got grass in it already possibly but now if I click on it and create a job, it says field work. Hmm. Can I dump what's in it? Unfold baler. Turn on baler. Can I not just dump what's in it? Let's just fill this up. Let's turn it off. Let's lift it. Let's just turn it back on again, actually. We'll get there. Let's uh, drop it automatically. Alright, let's go back to the start. So now we're at 0%. Maybe it will make a difference? Maybe it just needs to be at 0%. So let's go back. Create a job. Nope. Still field work. Which is not what we're doing. So maybe... Yeah, it just doesn't get it. Oh, where are you going? Stop. It's almost like it doesn't recognize that I have this attached. Is it because I got it second hand? Could it possibly be because I, because I got it second hand? What if I turn it on? Now would it recognize it? No. So it doesn't recognize it. In fact, it's trying to do something over there, which is not what I want it to do. So let's clear the current course, come back, create a job. No, it's not letting me do it. Generate a course before starting the job. Well, mm -hmm. 
No. Because that's field work and that's not what I'm doing. Although, let me just press start and see what it does. Ah, see, so it's just going to pick it up and drive with it. Alright, so that's not working. I mean, it says it's going to start there, but look, it goes off and does its own little thing, so, yeah. Alright, so that's weird. That doesn't make sense. Let's go back into here and turn off this expert mode. Hmm. Displays an info text window. Prefer custom field is there's a regular field at a selected point. Yes, prefer custom field, yes. Yes, that's what I wanted. So if I've made a custom field, ah So clear current course. Load course, top field, yes. Okay, yes. Now it picks up my field. Okay, nice, nice, nice. But it's still doing field work. It's not field work. I want to see where it goes. I'm just going to watch it. What is it doing? What is it doing? It's so confused. <laughs> it's so confused. It's gonna hit the. It's gonna hit the tractor again, isn't it? Yep. Okay. I guess I'd, I'll move out your way then and just let you do what you do. I'm just curious to see where you're going, to be honest with you. All right, let me move out your way, dickhead. Hold on. Go on then. Continue. Go on. Left shift and four. God, what is that? Wow, so these are all the different options. Okay. So I can turn all this off. Or on. Okay. I don't get it. I just want you to go and do your job. Well, well, that doesn't work, so, okay. Play with that later, because that's just confusing. So. Custom field borders can be assigned for course play to use, for example, in case of a meadow, which isn't recognized as a normal field. Ah, so you can actually set custom field borders for meadows. Nice. Lastly, CP has an interface for auto drive, which allows for refilling of a cedar, a nearby silo, or unloading a forage wagon, and so on. Okay. I mean, I'd be more interested in getting this to work before I mess about with anything else. 
First, you need to select a vehicle on the AI menu for generating a field work. Yep, done that. Okay. The current loaded course will be displayed in the map. Yep. Okay. When the field position is placed correctly on the field, you will see the field border drawn on a map. If you're creating a CP field work job, you will gain access to the course generating set. Okay. Now it's possible to start the driver directly from the menu. The giant's helper will drive to the target position, and from there, the CP job automatically takes over. Alternatively, you can also start from the driver from the HUD if you are close to the field with the vehicle or using an auto drive. Now it's possible to start the driver directly from the menu. Every fieldwork course is generated by the course generator. This is a mighty tool which allows you to customize the generated course you need. If you're new to this, you should probably start by only changing the headland amount setting. After that, you can always change the other values and hit generate and have a look at what certain values impact the course. Experimenting with this, checking on it. Do, 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 do. Basics. The first few values you see here are real basic stuff. Work width. Most tools will get the exact work width. And you don't have to care about this. Adjusting it will have an impact on your overall course. Understood. Multiple tools. This setting is used when you want more than just one vehicle to work on your course. Okay. Number of headlands. The best way to keep your vehicle on the field whilst turning at the end of each row is to add headlands. The number of headlands multiplied by the work width should be at least the total length of your vehicle plus the attached tools. The number of the headlands multiplied by the work width should be at least the total length of your vehicle plus the attached tools. Okay, I don't think you need to worry about that. Center options. Field center. There are different modes on how your field center pattern should look like. The classics and most used one is up and down. Spiral racetrack and lands have their own specific advantages over others. Lands, for example, will have the combines pipe point at the fruit most of the time. Okay. Up, down, row, direction. Automatically, mostly finds the best direction, but sometimes the longest edges fits better. Okay. Rows to skip. Very helpful to accelerate your work. As tools won't have to back up to turn into the next row. Rows to skip. This is very. This is a very helpful option to accelerate your work as tools won't have to back up to turn into the next row. Rows per land. This has only impact when the field center is set to lands and will tell the generator how many rows each land should be. The more rows, the fewer lands will be generated. Okay. Headland setting will only show up when you have set at least one. A number of headlands, you will gain options from where to start, on corner settings, directions, and overlap. Headlands are highly suggested to prevent tools leaving the field when turning. Okay. Start work on. As mentioned in the extended AI menu, the field position is used to set the start or end position for the field workhorse. When set to start on headland, it will it tells where the start should be. When changed to start on rows, it will tell where the end. Okay, end of work. Headland corner smooth or a simple smooth over makes sense. Yep. Headland direction clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay. Headland overlap how much percentage overlap? Yep. Field margin explain positive values reduce field size to add a buffer around a worked area in case you have obstacles near the field. Negative values enlarge the work to go beyond the field boundary to cover field borders that are not perfectly detected. Perfect. So field margin, okay. All right, so let's go and have a look at that. So that's for zero and four, five, four, five, zero, zero, okay. Okay.
Okay. But it's not field work. That's the only annoying thing, is it's not field work. And also, I don't want all that stuff on my screen, so how do I get that off? Open HUD with mouse, deactivated. All right, that's still on there. How do I get rid of that? That's this one. Oh, it's still on there. Okay, how do I get rid of that stuff off the screen? I don't know what any of this means, so I don't know what I'm doing. Active cycle prints. Makes no sense to me. Fold tools at course end. Okay, yep. Yeah. Mm, that will make sense. Hell is that? Debugging, okay. Right. Turn the debugging off. If there's a problem with it, obviously that would help. Clear current course. I don't get that stuff at the bottom though, that's annoying. Oh, shifting it forward, there we go. Cool, okay, cool, good to know. Alright, so that gets rid of that. So, it's just not recognising this load baler. And I wonder if it's because I got it off of... I wonder if it's because of how I got hold of it. Because it just says field work, but it's not. Also, I wonder if... If I was to grab this, for example, and then go to do a creative job. CP unload combined, see? Giant unloader. Oh. See, that's given me different options. Silo work. So I've got different options for everything except for this, which just doesn't recognise this. Just doesn't recognise this tool. Field work it just says field work. What if I humour me? Humour me for a second. Yeah. What about now? Field work, still field work. Okay. So it just doesn't recognize it. Change the bow size? Would it recognize it now? No. All right, so it doesn't look like I can automate this at the moment, but I want, I am curious to know if I change. I'm really curious to know that if I change this to a different style. It 
if it would work. So I wonder if I change this and and bought one rather than buying one off of the because the thing is I I bought this used, right? And I want I just wonder if buying it used affects the ability to use it in course play, which would be a weird bug, but and that's what bugs are, right? I like that this has been a struggle because you get to see the struggle. Like, this is complex, right? And a lot of people might look at it and go, oh, sod that. But this is what you have to get used to. So let's just, before we end this, have a quick look at what else it says. The course manager allows you to save courses and enables you to load save courses later. Again, it's really important when you want to have multiple workers driving the same course for convoy and multi-tools. This feature also allows you to pick the swap left behind a combine or a windrow, a forage wagon or a baler. I think I need a baler and it's the baler wrapper, it doesn't recognise it. When you have a course loaded, you can save it by clicking on save course. Okay. Yeah, that all kind of makes sense. That's that's simple. Mini HUD. Clicking on the vehicle name will open the vehicle settings menu. Clicking on the vehicle name will open the vehicle settings menu, will it? Oh, what from from here? Vehicle name. Do I want to reset this vehicle at all? What does that mean? What does that mean? Huh? It was reset to the shop. Why? Oh, because it was broken or something. Oh, I didn't mean to press that. Okay, well I'm glad. Okay, well now I'm here. I can grab this, but I did. I didn't mean to press that. Like I didn't. I. Well, I meant to press it. I just. I didn't know what it did. I thought maybe it was broken. If I reset it, it would work. No, that wasn't bad. But whilst we're here, we'll take this. Clicking on a vehicle name. It did say, clicking on the vehicle name, clicking on the vehicle name will open the vehicle settings menu. Oh, I need the mini HUD enabled for this though, right? Hmm. Need mini HUD. Um. I don't get it. I can see the thing in the top right hand corner there, I just don't know how to turn it on and it says here, clicking on the vehicle name will open the vehicle settings menu. Select the starting point we want, okay.
I will click on the vehicle and I will open the vehicle settings menu. That's the mini HUD. But how do I how do I get the mini HUD? Like, ah, come back. Like I can see it there. How do I? How do, how do I open it? Like, what's the key for it? Hmm. Okay. No, oh, not a tree. I don't know what the key is for that mini HUD. So that would be helpful, I guess. Let's just leave that there for a minute. Well, actually, no. Let's not. Let's let's go into here and see. Great job, field work. So just field work again. Hmm. Let's have a look. So I guess I just don't know how it works. That's the problem. Activate event help. Show action event helps text activated. So that would now be here. Oh. Ah, okay, right, that. <laughs> wow. Wow, okay, it's there. It's not even that. What's this? That's just... Hold on. Show info text window deactivated. So that was the info text window. Okay. Let's display as an info text window. Let's just keep that open for a minute. And then it opens. Ah, okay, right. That see that makes sense. CPAI bunker solo mode. I don't want bunker solo mode. I want my baler. I don't even know where I put it. I don't know where I put it and it's so dark. Did I leave it in the field here? Oh no, I'm, I, if I press this, I should be able to find it. There, I left it right there. Alright. Nearest waypoint, no course. Okay. Hire AI worker for bunker si silo mode. Open, close, HUD. So. Didn't know I could do that. Hire AI worker force. Hmm. I 
won't get it. Delete, open, close HUD. Ah, so it's delete to open and close the HUD. Okay, that makes sense. Hmm. Then this. Oh, I can record. Well, I can record what I want it to do. Wait, hold on. Can I can I record here? Can I sell it? I'd be like, do this. Hold on, because this would be pretty cool. So if I was to say. Turn on Baylor. And go. That's pretty cool. So you can give it a course that you want it to do. So I could record it to go, oh my god, I could set a better path. I can set a better path for this to go to the shop. That's nice. I think this is just pathing though, rather than actions, right? So if I was to then stop that. Do you want to save the recorded courses? Custom. Yes. Yes, I do. So then, what? If I come in here and go to courses. Oh, wow. So it's created this custom course for me. Which. I can then save, right? I can save that, right? If I go to here, I can... Open the course editor? No. Did it, it didn't save it though, right? I don't want to generate because I've already got one. Now I can save the course, but I don't want to do that. What's... Okay, so it's... I'm a little, com a little bit confused by this kind of thing that it's done. So if I do this, and then I stop it, do you want to save the recorded course as custom field CP2? Oh, so it's a, ah. Oh, I get it. So it created it as like a, a field almost. So I can map out the edge of a field, I can go around the edge of the field and I can create, so that's, 
that's that's how I can create a field. So if I wanted to, oh no, I don't even know where home is. Right, if I wanted to come around here. There it is. So right now, can I... Can I select this and record this journey and it will like to the shot? Let's try that, shall we? Let's kind of put this here in a car park. Let's record. See if this makes it any better, all right? So all we're going to do is follow this up. It's hard to do this at night, really, but it should be alright. If this works, this is a much, much better way to do things in terms of getting from A to B. Because if you notice the original AI, it really struggled when you sent it in that on that job. When you said create a job and you said go to here, it was like nah, went everywhere, but so now hopefully if this is right, it's plotting out this half for us. Should make life a lot quicker and easier. So let's see. Also, I can just assume it's going to go to the Waybridge, so I can just plant this perfectly onto the Waybridge. So, I think driving a little bit slower up here so I don't go crazy. It's wide angle. And I can turn in. I can perfectly bring this onto here like so. Right? Done. Do I want to save this? Yes. All right, now let's open this up. So now if I click on this, there we go. Rename custom field. I can call this um, shop run. That's a custom field, which is a bit weird. So now if I was to go Like I want it to do a job. Okay, so now I guess I would have to go create job. Now it's highlighted that. So my target position. going to be here. Field position is going to be this. What start job? Generate a course. Uh, 
I don't think it can. It's going to struggle. Wow, okay, it's trying to do some weird thing on here. So that doesn't work. All right, so that doesn't work. I would need to go here. Clear current course, go back. Great job. No, so I, I thought that would have worked. Hmm. So I don't actually see the point of doing that. I guess that's just for making a field, right? So if I ah, so that would be if I wanted to make a custom field. So it's not going to work for like a go from here to there. Like if I wanted like a start and an end point. Yeah. Alright, good to know. So in that case, I can click on that. And I can delete it. Yep. No point in having that, it's a waste. Annoyingly, I can't click on, there we go. Target is not on a field, so it can't do field work. I can tell it to go to here. But it's not going to use that kind of get rid of that see it can't make it so all right that course play i don't i get it i understand it i mean i i think it will make working in the fields a bit easier it doesn't work with the baler though so that the baler wrapper so that's no good and whilst it can make better work of the fields i don't feel like it really does anything else it doesn't like it sells it as like a hey this is making the AI so much better but um, it allows you to generate field courses with additional features so, okay so course play allows you to generate field courses with additional features okay another big feature is the collecting or wrapping of bales on the field mm, I haven't got that to work All right, so we've looked at that. We understand that. We get that now. This makes sense. Uh, okay. All right, so you can kind of play with stuff, so that's good. You can see it. That makes sense. Custom fields. There are two ways to make custom fields. The first one is to use the recall function on HUD, which we just did. Press the recall button and drive the field boulder. Okay. Second one is you can do it from there, which is what we did. Okay, so we know how to do that. Multi twin convoy. It's possible to have five vehicles working together. I can't even get one vehicle to work together, so I'm not even going to look at getting five vehicles to work together. Like for me, no, not an option. Bail wrapping and collecting. Wrapping and collecting bales can be done in two different ways. The first one is to load the same course you use for your baler and let the wrapper or collector run that course. However, this can be tricky as some bales love to roll or fly off the path. At this point, our wrap and collect job type can help as it doesn't need a course. Stay on the field and just start the driver from the HUD with wrap collect bales or use the AI map to send him to a field. Wrapping bales is very simple. Load a course for your baler and start like any other field work job. Ah. Without a course, the course play scans the field for unwrapped bales and uses the Pathfinder to find a way to the best close. Ah. Automatically backing up if a bale is in front of it. Okay. That makes sense. 
That makes sense. So it doesn't recognize the baler wrapper in one. It doesn't recognize it as a baler. Not looking at that. Mm -hmm. Course play info, okay. Okay. Cool, so it tells you stuff. Vine work we'll do later. Course editor. Mm -hmm. We'll look at that later. Harvester unloader. Yep, we'll look at that later. Bunker silo worker. Hmm. If a vehicle has a distribute or shield attached, the silo mode is pre-selected. Okay. So different attachments allow different options in a menu. That makes sense. But this one doesn't work, so... Okay. I mean, that's something, obviously, you could reach out, speak to the support, and be like, Hey, guys, this doesn't work with this at all. But I'm assuming if I got just a baler, that would work. It would give me those options. Maybe I should hire one to test it tomorrow. I feel like I lost a day today. I feel like I lost a day playing with this mod. But at the same time, I do feel like I learned a lot. It's been painful. Don't get me wrong. And, uh... The whole purpose of this being unedited. Because believe me, there will be nothing easier and better for me right now than just deleting this video and being like, <laughs> we lost a day. But that's the pain of this, is to understand that it's not always straight. I mean, I'm not a stupid person, but even I kind of struggle with some things on here. And if I do, then I know other people do too. I can see the benefits of this mod. I absolutely can. But I can also see some of the, the challenges of it as well. So this isn't going to allow me to fully automate. It will make it nice for me to cut the grass. Great, it'll automatically cut the grass. I'm then going to, going to have to wrap them myself. But what I should be able to do, and I kind of want to test this quickly. I need to find the... I need to find this tool over here. But if I put this in a field, it should give me new options. I just want to see if I get new options come up. Yeah, look. Hire a worker to collect and wrap bales. It's not on a field. But if it was on a field, it would collect the bales. Okay, nice. So that's a good job. Although I didn't mind that. That wasn't a bad job. But good to know. Okay, cool. So the, the attachments that you have allow the course play... I mean, it should just say that at the start. It would have been a lot easier, right, if, if at the start it just said, depending on what attachment you have attached to your vehicle will depend on what options you have available in course play. This is how you set up a field. Done. Because that's what you really need at the start. All right, let's kind of just go and sort this out. Where is... Oh, my God, where is it? Oh, it's here. Okay. Um, I need to open up the side... I then need to drop that. I then need to get these working and move this stuff out of the way. I think I've run out of water. That was a, a very distracting day, but I feel like I've learned something. Painful as it may have been. Let's let's sort this out. Oh. A bit of an aggressive throw there. Alright, let's get these flowers out. We'll get some more made overnight. Don't really feel the need to spend any money today. Bit of a learning curve though. I 
Okay. I feel like we've definitely learned something, and uh, as long as we're learning, it's all good. Because at least now, even if we don't know what to do, we absolutely know what not to do. And it just shows you the power of mods. You can see how powerful mods can be. But again, you need to be careful because, whoa, as good as a mod can be, it can also be bad. Just be careful. Okay, so, that being done and said, or said and done even, vehicle debug is off, empty, okay, so now we can turn off open HUD with a mouse. So if I do that, it means I can only open it with a delete key. And I can't right click to get my mouse open, which is nice. So if I press delete, the mouse comes up, but otherwise it doesn't. That's nice. All right. I don't think I need to do anything else there, so let's go back into this menu. So we're going to keep that one deactivated, and here in the settings... Dun dun dun... Show info text window. We can deactivate that. I don't think I need that. And I don't think we need action event help either I think we're okay so that in itself is going to clear up everything here so there's no help now in the controls and there's nothing on the right hand side I um, actually I guess I guess we could have it on here in case we need it so the action event help we could leave on because that actually did help me now that's here and now I can open and close the HUD perfect All right, cool. Let's um, let's leave that there. It's been a long day. Let's call it. Thank you very much for joining me. It's been a painful one, but it's also been, I think, required for us to understand how horseplay works. I definitely feel like we understand it now. It links into here. We've now got our fields. We'll keep this enabled. You tomorrow we'll utilise the main field. That should work. It should be okay. So we'll be able to. I will be able to load up our, what we should be able to do here, right, is load up our jobs. So main field, load the course, activate it, come back to here, click on him and look, starting there, going up and down all the way around, it's going to cut all the grass. So that's going to cut the grass for us, and then we can bale the grass, we're going to have to manually bale it up, unfortunately. I just don't think there's going to be a way for it. It just doesn't know how to do it, unfortunately. So, yeah. I can try and hire a baler and see if that works. But then, and let's look in the shop quickly because we haven't looked in the shop. There's nothing we want here. That would mean I'd need to buy a baler on its own. And then a wrapper on its own. I don't want to do that. There's no items on this page. What? Oh, where's, where's all the items? Oh, okay. Oh, that's working now. That was weird. No, the shop's empty or have I done something? Okay. Has that broken the map? I 
That's strange. Hmm. What's going on? That's very strange. I don't know what's happened, but... Very strangely seems like... Let me... Hmm... Clear current course. There's nothing in the shop. Could that be the plugin? Could the plugin be messing up with the map, maybe? Let's let's just log out and log back in and see. I was just about to end the video there and call it a day, but that that was strange. Hmm. It potentially looks like the game's frozen. I don't know. I'm, I'm seeing the same thing you're seeing here, which is weird. Okay. Let me use the task manager to end the task. Kill the game. And then let's reload it. And see if that makes any difference. Because that was a little bit strange. It says it's downloading content. I think there's an update. Yes, there is. There's an update. Okay, so it's, it's doing a game update at the moment. And it's downloading an update. So maybe that was the problem. Maybe that was the problem. It seems to be that there's an update. I don't know what that update is, but it's just uh, just about finished now. It's a 1.5 gigabyte update. Oh no, 3.2 gigabyte update. It's a massive update. 3.2 gigabytes. Okay. I I don't know what that update is. Let's have a look and see. Hold on. Hmm. So I'm just, uh, I'm just having a look and seeing. It doesn't say anything. Last update was 6th of June. So I don't, that's a bit weird. I don't understand what that's just updated. But it's just done a 3.2 gigabyte update. Alright. Let's go back into career mode. Let's look at our latest game. We've got our two mods. Well, our map and our mod. Hmm. No news that I can see. Is is this going to work now? Okay, so now it works. So that was a really weird update. Everything disappeared from the shop. We did an update and everything's back. Kind of really strange, but we'll, we won't put it down to a mod. We'll just put that down to being a bit weird with a game. Okay, cool. Nice. Um... We were looking at Baylor's. We're trying to. I'm also just going to pause the game for a sec. Ah, uh, no, I can't pause it, can I, if I go into this menu? That would be okay. Baylor's. So this was the one I was using, was a combi. I guess I would need to use 
a standard, but then I can do 180, right? What? I could do 180 if I just use this baler on its own. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, that would do up to 240, which is also interesting. But then I need a wrapper. One eighty to two forty grass. Inline wrappers are used to wrap multiple bows together to one tube. What? Hmm. So these two just wrap those, and these wrap squares, which does up to 240 centimeters. That does 220 centimeters. So 220 centimeters there, which is Better than a 150, I guess. Less bales. But then I need a whole new method, right? Because what I've bought then is wrong. Because this would only load circles. So then I'd need... ...14 bales at 240. So then I'd want this. That actually could do 24 bows at 180. This does 14 bows at 240. Interesting. So if I had that, that would pick up. I can also get the thing to, to bow them, but then I'd need to go and wrap them myself. We can look at it as an option, I guess. I kind of like the way we went, but we can look at it as an option. If it, if it automates the process, maybe we can look at it. We'll see. But all right, so we've looked at the plugin today. We understand how it works. It's been a bit confusing, but we got there in the end. So uh, everything's set up for the morning. We're good to go. Now, tomorrow, we're going to cut the grass in the other field. We're going to do all the grass work. And um, yeah, getting ready now because it's nearly time with silage. I think we're getting near to that point where yeah it's going to start being worth some money now so december we can sell this so september now it's already worth something october it'll be worth more november december we can actually start selling it now to be honest we're going into Oct we're going into october now it's worth some more it's not a huge amount of difference if we wait a bit longer we can we can start selling all that off getting that money so i think tomorrow is going to be a huge day we're going to do the cutting the grass in the big field. We've got to bale up all of it from both fields. Let it ferment. Take the old stuff out. So yeah, loads of work to do tomorrow. Today, I apologise. Long, long day. I apologise for that. But a bit of a learning curve there. And uh, one that we did live. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.